Hi everyone, it's Jerry Ann with scrapandstampcreations.blogspot.com and today is September 7th, 2015 and we are going to be creating uh, cute, cute projects like this teapot um, by Linda Parker over on YouTube. She's got a cute little or tea mug and a coffee mug and then we have some cute little cards as well using the Treats of Friendship stamp set from Close to My Heart. So, and we're going to use some of the fundamentals paper. We're going to use eggplant is our color today. So nice deep purple goes with the fall since we're freezing to death here in eastern Washington. And so I wanted to give you a sneak peek of what we have coming up next week. Next week's class, we are going to be using the stamp of the month for September, which is S1509 Paper Garden. And it is a really, really awesome stamp set. Very versatile. Seen a lot of things out there on Pinterest and things. Um, but I am excited because I will have a brand new card cutting guide for you guys. And we will be creating a variety. We will be creating 12 cards. So you'll need your card organizer, your card sorter that we created. And we will be... Um, creating a variety of different cards, everything from a three by three all the way up to a six by six with this cutting guide, which is really nice because sometimes you just need the little enclosure cards. Sometimes you need an actual card card. Sometimes you want something a little more special because you're only giving a card. And, that, and so this has it to the T. It is definitely one of those things. The thing that you will want to get um, I don't know if you guys have been watching, um, there's a couple of our pals who are out there right now who are using the um, how-to books from Close to My Heart to create uh, cards. Um, uh, Lauren's mom, I can't remember her first name right off the top of my head. She's been doing a kid's class where she's been using um, the... the um, the, what is the other name of the book? The Originals Program, and this is the Wishes Program. So all of these cards come out of the Wishes book that I'm going to show you. Um, the Wishes book comes in a soft cover at this point in time, and the item number is 9041, very affordable. You get like 90, 90 or 50, either 50 or 60, I don't know. It's a ton of card. Um, card pieces. So I used the paper garden. The other thing that I did is I used the Say It All, which is a hostess set, and it has a ton, a ton, a ton of words, which is really nice. Everything from thinking of you and birthday, there's an I'm so sorry, there's a happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day, it's your day, anniversary, Valentine's Day, just for you, you're the best, fabulous friend. Really great, versatile set, and that really, really great, versatile set. One that um, if you choose to be a hostess or have an order over $150, you can get this at a very, very discounted price. Absolutely. So that was cool. Awesome, Monica. I'm glad you got them. All right, so I'm going to show you the cards because we will have a brand new, like I said, brand new cutting guide next week. <clears throat> and these will be the cards that we will be making. Now, I know I showed a sneak peek over on the Scrap and Stamp Creations um, blog or Facebook group. And so I'm going to show you what these look like tonight. And again, there's a variety of different sizes. It will run it just very similar to a cutting guide, and we'll go from there. All right, I'm going to bring it in really close again. So you guys can see. So we have this cute little adorable three by three card that uses one of the smaller stamps from the collection. Sometimes all you need is just a little card enclosure and that to go with a nice little gift. You can punch a hole in it, write something on it. It's a really, really cute, cute card. Um, so this is the Pomegranate Fundamentals collection. All right, our second card here is a Thinking of You card. It uses the dots background embossing folder and poppy. And then you can see that the stamp I've got um, 
I did kind of a two-tone. I stamped in poppy at the top and then desert sand on the bottom. So I'll show you some of these techniques. This is a five by seven card. Um, it says just for you. And then this little piece here is a cutout from one of the Cricut cartridges. I linked everything on um, Cricut Craft Room when I do these. And so sometimes I am able to print multiple things off. And so I think this is off of Art Philosophy. Okay. Then we have a cute, cute card. This is a fancy fold card as well. It's a matchbook style. So it opens this way. And again, this uses um, the paper from um, the Fundamentals collection that has pomegranate in it. Again, this would look really pretty with some glitter or some sparkle. I did use some of the brown or the bronze shimmer trim. Here's another little cute gift enclosure. Love how this one turned out. Just a really cute little itty bitty card. Sometimes you just need to drop something in for someone. So this one is really cool. We have this one here, which is very masculine. It says, you're the best. I used desert sand and um, champagne together for this, this piece, as well as cocoa. And, that, and again, this is the quadrifoil embossing folder. So it is an embossed piece on the back. Okay, this wooden piece here is retired, but I'm sure you guys have stuff in your stash. This is a cute little three by six card. Um, this fits in nicely in those regular little envelopes. And that, so that works out really, really well. And then um, again, kind of all um, together and all of that kind of stuff. So um, multiple stamping, um, the different color stamping off. Poppy is the color with this one. And then we get into some of the ones with the fancy flowers. So this is a standard size card and it's got this big circle. So if you just finish this out, it actually is a circle circle that's there. Doesn't look like it in the card. And that this uses um, eggplant, which is what we're going to use tonight. And again, just um, just a single tone stamping and that. So pretty card, something that would be wonderful to give as a gift, you know, when you're just doing a happy birthday, it says just because. And then here is the six by six card using the same. And you guys know that when I get a card, when I get a set, I usually um, run an entire page of pieces. So I have lots of flowers cut for this set. So it made me easy to just not choose not to, um, to cut them or use them. So again, beautiful card. I, I um, inked in the pomegranate here and then the rest of it in uh, desert sand. Quadrifoil again, embossing folder. And here is a poppy one. And again, all of these layouts, all of the pieces, all of the sizes for everything come out of the wishes book. And that this is, um, embossed here with the ink over the top to give it kind of that shadow effect. And then we have the sentiment that says, you're the best fabulous friend. Five by seven card. And then we have this really pretty one as well. And this uses the honeycomb um, embossing folder and then um, the circle, and then I stamped in pomegranate and stamped off. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of this next week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And, that, and then finally, my very favorite card that is smushed right at the moment, just because it was in this basket. I love the poppy color. I love the color of poppy. It's orange, it's pretty, it's bright. I love how this card turned out. So grateful, um, love the embossing folder. Just love, 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 love it. Poppy and Coco are probably one of my new favorite combos. All right, so those are the cards that we are going to be creating with a brand new cutting guide next week, which I am super duper, uber, uber, uber excited about. And that, um, so you guys will see those cutting guides come up next week over on my blog and on the Facebook page. And that, and we will get started um, with those. Thanks, Joy.
I'm excited. All right. So we are going to get started doing, because I want you guys to have the teapot, because the cards are pretty simple. The cards are pretty easy. Basically, there's some coloring and things like that for the cards that we're creating. This one's kind of a little tricky because it looks like a donut box, and it really is kind of like a donut box. And, that, and these are more coloring kind of things, but basically they're pretty simple cards. And that, so I want to make sure that you guys, um, I can walk you through making the teapot. Again, this was a, um, a creation that came from Linda Parker over on YouTube. Um, so that is um, her measurements and everything. I just wrote them out over on my blog. Um, so you guys can go over and print those off if you need them. Um, all of the scoring lines and everything, I kind of sat and did that part. And that, but Linda's got some really great things. One of the things that she has that I cannot wait to make is actually a ribbon holder. And I thought it would be perfect for the shimmer trim. So I am super excited about that. I have a friend who I think needs one as a birthday present. So I'm going to go ahead and make her one too. Maybe find some shimmer trim to put in there. And um, that's kind of what we're doing today. So do you guys have any questions before we get started? I'm going to take a drink. I feel like I've done, well, I've done nothing but talk for a half an hour. Show project and talk. <laughs> yep, it must be fall because I'm about inspired. We are going to use, I'm going to bring you guys out a little bit. Oh, not that far out because then you can see the floor. I got inspired. Finally, something came through. And then, of course, I wanted to use that Cricut cartridge that went on hiatus for a while. I couldn't find it. You can ask Tony. I was, like, ripping things apart. I was putting things away the whole bit. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. So we're going to start with the pieces that we need for the teapot first because the coffee cup or the cup comes really easy especially if you can do this part. Okay, so it's two pieces, really cute. I thought it was gonna be harder than it was. I did kind of change, uh, yeah. I did change a couple of things, like her handle, she actually attaches it to a side piece. Mine always kept falling off, so I fixed it so it went into the, um, the actual construction piece, which made it that the piece that goes here needed to be you have to kind of manhandle your spout a little bit in order to get it to um, kind of sit up there nicely. And then I should have made my lid before I put my thing together so I could see where my cup needed to go so that I could put there, put my thing in there. You know, I I did, and they normally all live. The, the best part is, is that I've linked them all in Cricut Craft Room, except for that one. So even if I couldn't find it, I could still use it, except for the one I wanted. So they are in the china cabinet that only houses Cricut cartridge, the Cricut machine, scrapbooking supplies, and all of that for my grandpa. So it is safely at home right at the moment. All right, so I got my notes. I typed them all up nice and neat for you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to use, I have um, a couple of pieces of the fundamentals. This has a embossing on one side and a pattern on the other. It's just uh, polka dots. And then I have two sheets of the um, eggplant cardstock as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the very first thing we need is we need to cut our bases. So you're going to need your envelope cut envelope punch board. 
our first cut is at seven inches. And then we want to cut this down to 10 and 3 quarters. All right, so this is our teapot base. Okay, now our next piece needs to be two and seven eighths by eleven and three quarters. This is your lid. Okay, eleven and three quarters. This is our lid. And now out of a, you save these because we'll use them on our cards. That'll match the little set. The next piece that we need, and you're going to need to cut it again out of um, a separate piece of cardstock because you just can't make it happen. You need a three inch by five and three quarters inch piece. So I cut it three inches and then flip this to five and three quarters. And this is your spout. Okay. So, and then for our teacups, we need, and I'm going to make two at the same time, just because I, I want two cups in my pot. So we're going to cut at eight inches, and then we're going to cut at five and a half. and five and a half. And those are gonna give us our cups, okay? So we have just a little bit of, out of two sheets of cardstock, we just have a little bit. And unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of anything except for this one. <laughs> These, I bought a combo pack. <laughs> so I haven't bought full packs of any of the colors yet. All right, so this is our decoration piece. It matches perfectly. All right, so we're going to set that off to the side here. You'll love it. I'm going to go ahead and stick those in there. All right, so now we're going to do, let's do our lid first. This is probably the hardest piece of the entire thing. So we are going to do it first. Okay, so this is the 11 and 3 quarters by 2 and 7 eighths piece. Okay, we're going to do this one first. You also, oh, you know, out of our decorative paper, you are going to need a 1 and 3 eighths. one and three eighths by nine inch piece. One, two, three. One and three eighths by nine. And this is gonna give us our decorative pieces and we'll do both of these together. Oh, I'm glad you could come and play. All right, so you're going to need your scoring board. I don't have a scoring board. You don't have a scoring board? I don't. I'm not watching. Are you watching my show upstairs no. on Ustream? I, don't, I used to have Ustream. I don't think I have it. Oh, well, go online, go into Safari and type in Ustream. Or go to Google and type in Jerry Ann and it'll come up. Or do we uh, check on the app store? Sure, you can check on the app store. <laughs> All right, so we're making our lid, which is too cute. I don't know what we'll do for the top of it just yet, but we will do something. Okay? But it's easy. It really is not hard at all. All right. So our very first thing is we are going to do 
I'm reading my notes. We're gonna start on the two and seven eighths inch side. So two and seven eighths. And we are gonna score at a half an inch all the way down and one inch. So except for I scored at three quarters. So a half an inch and one inch. Mine will just have a decorative bead on it. Okay? <laughs> half an inch and one inch. Then we're going to turn it this way. Hmm. Are you back, Tony? Are you back? All right. So we've done on our two and seven eighths, we scored at a half an inch and at one. We're going to flip to the long side. And we are going to score at one and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. Three and three quarters. Five and five eighths. Seven and a half. Nine and three eighths. And eleven and a quarter. Okay. One and three eight one and seven eighths. Three and three quarters. Five and five eighths, seven and a half, nine and three eighths, eleven and a quarter. Okay, so those measurements again, as soon as I like find some stuff out of the way, are right there. In my, um, on my blog. Yes, honey. I'm going to call my grandparents later. Do you know their number? I do. Would you like me to dial it? Uh, I'll do it. Well, I can't do it because I can't tell you. Either Daddy can tell you in the other room, or I can dial it for you, but I cannot tell you what the number is because I'm broadcasting live. Please get the icky stuff out of your mouth. All right, so all those measurements are over on my blog. Okay. All right. <sighs> it will move that. All right, so we're down, we've scored everything. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bottom piece and you're gonna fold it up, okay? Okay, so you're going to fold this part up, the very bottom score line. You're going to flip it over so that the little piece is here on the side. The little half inch is on the side over here. And you're going to take and mark with your, um, with your piece at one and three eighths. One and three eighths. Three and a quarter. I'm just going to give it a little mark. Five and an eight, seven, eight and seven eighths, no, yeah, eight and seven eighths, and ten and three quarters. Okay. Oh. Uh, 
Okay, awesome. So, scored half an inch, scored an inch to the top, score across, one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, five and five eighths, seven and a half, nine and three eighths, and eleven and a quarter. Then you're going to pick it up, you're going to fold the bottom crease, the very first score line, flip it completely over and put the half inch side on the side. You're going to just put a little notch in your cardstock at one and three eighths, three and a quarter, five and an eighth, seven inches, eight and seven eighths, and ten and three quarters. Okay, <clears throat> so now what we're going to do so we're going to go ahead and take our piece out. You are going to want a straight edge. I'm going to use my close to my heart uh, Versamat and turn it over. It's squishy on this side. It's got a squishy part to it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and fold that second line. Okay. Fold your second line. So you can see it. You are going to take your ruler, it's got a nice neat ruler, it's got like a lip on it so you can grab it, and you are going to take and start where your notch is and bring those to the point and give it, we're making triangles you guys, we're scoring triangles, okay? So we have our first triangle here, and we're going to do that all the way across, okay? From the mark to the intersection, mark to the intersection. The mark to the intersection. Until we have created kind of like the before we got a die to make the milk carton. Oops. Apparently the scoring board didn't like being perched on top of the garbage can. All right, so hopefully you guys can see we've got bends and folds and everything. Okay, I'll let you guys catch up. I'm going to grab my trimmer and scoring board here. That are not enjoying being perched on the garbage can. All right. This is our. Did she jump out of her skin? Oh no, she was she was sitting on my lap anyway. So I'm gonna just start about. Have you talked to Allison about? Yes, I already took care of it. She can't. Julie's going to. Okay. All right. So how are we all doing with this part? Do we, we got it figured out? Honest that this will look like this. All right, so good, good, so good so far. All right. 
on the nine inch piece. So we're gonna take our scoring board again. Okay, scoring board, nine inches across the top. We're gonna score at one and a half. We're gonna score at three. We're gonna score at four and a half. At six. And at seven and a half. Okay. If she gets behind, I'll just Skype with her and we'll get it done. <laughs> Did she get her ruler? I guess I didn't put that on the supply list. I'm very excited. It's going to be cute. All right, so we've got our nine inch piece. Now we're gonna notch at three quarters of an inch, just at the top, three quarters of an inch, at two and a quarter. Just putting a little notch in there. Three and three quarters, just a little notch five and a quarter, six and three quarters, and eight and a quarter. Okay, just little notches. All right. <laughs> she knows better. All right, so we have little notches across the top and then we also have score lines, okay? All right, now on this piece, we're going to want to cut triangles, okay? So I just kind of bent these to pieces. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut triangles and you can do this any way you want to. I, You can draw lines from one corner to the other or just cut triangles. So there's one. There's two. And while we're sacrificing some triangles that have a line down the middle, you can use those for a different project. If you can do triangles without having, <laughs> if you can do triangles without having to do the score line, like you can just tick mark on each side, then you aren't going to have kind of wasted triangles. These scissors need to be cleaned bad. All right, so we have six pieces of folded, <laughs> folded triangle, and then six pieces of regular triangle. So out of that, we created our little pieces of triangle, okay? Oh, like where did my piece go? All right, goodness. This scoring board wants to be here with me. All right, guys, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your trusty scissors and you are gonna notch a little bit and cut out the little itty bitty corner here on the one side. And you are gonna notch the top edge, okay? So this is the little itty bitty corner and then you're gonna top edge. So you're just gonna notch it a little bit, okay? 
good visual there. Just comes out. All right. Now I have to take the big old huge honkin ATG again because I'm out of the little tape. And you want to just go ahead and add your little triangles in your triangle piece. Should fit in there very nicely. This thing is so cumbersome. I know Martha loves it. See, I'll fussy cut and she can glue everything. I know, you guys are probably on Skype together while I'm doing this, which is fun. Okay, the first one, you're leaving that second one in there. You're just taking out that bottom corner. Uh. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and crease all of these. Oh, wait. You're supposed to curl these all towards you or onto themselves. So all the straight lines get curled so that your piece is on the inside. Okay? Okay? <laughs> I'm going to make Tony run for another something, you guys. Ready? You're going to need a little hole punch, Tony. I have a little eighth inch hole punch. And you are going to want to punch at the top of each of your triangles. Try and kind of get it kind of towards the top, but not where it's going to make a big difference. Okay, so now you can see we have a hole in each one of those. See? Eyelets. <laughs> that would be a good use for eyelets. You could set all your eyelets in there. <laughs> we'll wait for Tony to find her hole punch. And we're all curled on ourselves. Okay? All right, so now you're going to fold back the score lines. For your because we we scored in the middle, they should um, start scoring easy for you. So you're just going to give them a good burnish. Okay. Straight lines go to the back, the curved lines go to the front. Mountain fold, valley fold. Just like those milk cartons we made so long ago. Okay. So now it looks like this. <laughs> At the top of the triangles.
Okay. All right, now we're going to put some really good sticky adhesive. You can use anything that's really super strong, or you can use your score tape. And I have a boatload of eighth inch, so I'm just using two pieces. So now what we're going to do is we are going to join the edges. So you're going to slip this little piece inside because this bottom is folded up. How far down? Just into the tip, kind of about the same, same, same. All right, so now we have this interesting crown, kind of an interesting crown. Give it a good push. And if you push it in, you get this really kind of neat kind of piece here. Okay. Now what you're going to need is a piece of twine, ribbon, something little, thin, and kind of easy to manipulate that isn't going to fray on you. So don't use thick twine. Okay. So now you're going to take your twine and go up from the bottom and go across into a hole and you're going to basically sew the top together. So you go up the next one and back down. And then up and back down. So you end up with this crisscrossy pattern. I know, poor Tony. So the idea is a nice tight knot inside to keep our box shut, okay? That's why you decorate over the top of it. So give it a good pull. I should have left a little longer, okay? Just give it a good knot. Okay? All of that, whatever you use is gonna be hidden, so you don't have to match or anything. All right, so now we have our box lid. Okay, everybody with me still? Just can't use something stiffer. Punch a bigger hole. All right, so we have our lid. 
It fits nice. Okay. How is everybody with their lid? Got your lid? We know Tony's struggling with her lid. Are we ready for our to do our teapot? The next one's really simple. We are going to need six pieces. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, we are. While we're getting there, the mats that we're going to need for our coffee cup are one and a half by two and three quarters. So we're going to go ahead and cut those first. We need six of them. Two and three quarters. And by one and a half. One. Is this right? Yep. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay. So as we're still waiting for Tony to catch up with us. We are going to use our corner rounder as soon as we find it again. I know I wouldn't have thrown it. Well, we'll use this green one. And we're going to round. <laughs> Oh, uh, we're going to round. No, I want the other corner rounder. Hold on, I'm going to dig. I want it to look nice. That's not nice. Hmm. Hey, we'll use the envelope punch board. <laughs> yeah, but this can be done after. So, I mean, if we have to, we can, you know. All right, so we're going to use our envelope punch board. <laughs> and we'll corner around with that. <laughs> all right we got our six little pieces here all right we need our scoreboard and your big piece of paper which is ten and three quarters by seven and your scoreboard okay 
Again, these are over on my blog, which is scrapandstampcreations.blogspot.com. And for those of you in the chat, I have posted a link for the measurements so you guys don't get lost, okay? All right, so this is our seven by 10 and three quarter inch piece. Okay. Our first score on the 10 and three quarter inch side is at one and three quarters, three and a half, five and a quarter, Seven, eight and three quarters, and ten and a half. Okay, one and three quarters, three and a half, five and a quarter, seven, eight and three quarters, ten and a half. Okay. Now on the seven inch side, seven inches across, we're gonna score at one and a quarter and four and a half. Okay. <laughs> All right, got everything scored. On the seven inch side, one and a quarter, four and a half. All right. <clears throat> now what we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're gonna go ahead and fold over and burnish on each of our score lines. So we've just done the, um, we've done all of the burnishing on the lines down the 10 and three quarter inch piece. So seven inch lines, uh, everything's burnished, okay? We're not going to burnish the other ones just yet, but it's not a problem if you already did. All right, you're going to need your envelope punch board. And we're going to go ahead and start at the end where we're gonna fold one whole piece. We're gonna leave the little itty bitty piece at the end here. Yes, I did find it when I was looking for the Cricut cartridge that like was lost that I wanted. <laughs> I found that. Now I seem to have misplaced a, um, a corner rounder, but you know, we'll find it but I linked the other one. All right, so where are the score lines? So this is the little piece and this is the big piece, okay? Little end, this is the end that is an inch and a quarter. So this is an inch and a quarter, and then you got the big long piece. So an inch and a quarter, you're gonna line this up kind of in the middle of just the line here, and you're gonna punch. It's going to give you this nice little wonky thing, okay? You're going to do that for the very first piece without folding it over. And you're going to go through and do that all the way down. 
just kind of eyeball center. Yeah, use the punch board to round it. <laughs> that worked. All right, so now you have a piece that looks like this. Nice big holes. Kind of like a cracker. Okay, not my idea. Just following somebody else's tutorial. That is free. Go over and see Linda Parker. She's like clever. <laughs> I do occasionally. Not very often. So now what we're going to do is you're going to go ahead and cut off this little piece here. You're going to angle this piece here. You're going to um, cut off this top piece here little skinny top piece. You're going to cut that off. Okay. So now your piece has a little jaunt and this is the bottom. Okay. All right. How are you doing? Because I'm ready to pull the big shot out so we can die cut some circles. All right, so now you're going to burnish everything and then you're going to roll this all up so that some of those inside pieces. The other thing that you want to do is you want to um, angle these couple of pieces, this, this one right here, and then this top one here. Not real big, but definitely give it a little bit of a, a shave, okay? In, shave, shave, good to go. All right, we're going to need our um, I have a piece of the designer series paper. This is the um, fundamentals. And you are going to need um, You're going to need a couple of pieces of parts of things. So the circles that you need for this are a two and a quarter inch circle and then you need the one and a half inch circle for the inside. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you about these. This is the stamp case that you guys get with Close to My Heart stamps. This is a We Are Memory Keepers die with all those hundreds of thousands of circles. <laughs> and that, and it came in a plastic thing, and I don't know how you store that kind of stuff afterwards. However, you can get three of these from Close to My Heart with the stamps and all of that kind of stuff for $5.95. They're six by six. And that uh, they're really, really nice. Um, so if you guys are interested, um, the item number is uh, Z335. 
um, and $5.95 for three of the envelopes. So, okay. So now I'm going to find some washi tape because, you know, that's the only reason we use washi tape is to hold dies in place. And we're going to kind of fit these in. Kind of eyeball it. We're going to add our tape together. Okay. We need the other pieces too, but we're just not going to use them for right this second. Okay. And we're going to cut out the handle. Now, you can just cut out a donut out of one of your Cricut cartridges or one of your silhouettes or any of that. that again here in a minute. And now we have a hole. Okay. So now we have a handle. So what you're going to do is go ahead and fold this in half, and if it doesn't match perfectly, it is handmade, handcrafted. They should love it anyway, regardless. Now, you want to dry fit your piece. This little flap here is going to go inside here. Okay. Now what we want to dry fit is our lid so we know how far down to put, I'm going to just use a pencil, how far down to put our little, so it'll come now, our handle. So I've just made a little mark right here. And that's where we need to start our handle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, sticky strip. I can't afford mine to have the same hobby I do. So I wouldn't want to share my stuff. Okay, so we're putting adhesive on the inside and on the outside. Okay, inside and the outside. Now I'm going to take my big old huge ATG gun. And the only place it fits is on the floor. And we're going to go ahead and add our decorative pieces to this. Mine just would like to use all this good stuff. He'd be like, you have it, we should use it. I'm like, but it, I, I'm not done looking at it yet. There's stuff that we just have to look at. All right. 
right, guys. See what I've done? Barely, because it's tone on tone, pretty much. Okay. All right. Adhesive on the little tab. Flip it over. Adhesive on this part that's going to meet it. We're going to go ahead and peel up our sticky strip here. Backing off of it anyway. We're going to look to our front and make sure our handle is well below that. We're going to go ahead and attach it there. So there we go, just like that. Ah. All right, the next thing we're going to do is just below this upper score line here, where this does, just below it, we're going to run a piece of tape along the edge, not on the score line, but just below it. And then we're going to run, run, run one right across the top as well. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and take the sticky strip off of this one and this one. And we're going to carefully take it off of this little piece here, too. Okay? Now, starting at the piece with the sticky on the outside, we're going to slowly kind of curl our piece up. You do not want to shove all of this down. You want this last one to leave up a little. And then what you want to do is stick this piece in to have it meet up. and give it a good crease. And then you're gonna bend your handle so that it'll stand out, okay? So now you have this shape. Okay. Everybody to hear? You can see our lid fits on. I'm very excited. Everybody, see what we're doing? Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut up each and every one of these lines. Okay. So we've cut all them apart now. On three of the pieces, we are going to put score tape or whatever strong adhesive you have. One, three next to each other. They have to be next to each other. Two. Three. All right. Yep. Yeah. Three. So you're going to need your two and a quarter inch die again. You need two more circles. Okay. So we're going to cut two more circles out. Ugh. Thank you. 
And I'm going to go ahead and use um, the designer paper again. I'm just going to cut a piece three inches wide. So we just need two circles. If you've got a punch, that would work great too. All right, let's go here. There's one. There's one circle, and we need a second circle. Circle number two. ATG, some glue, some something on this circle, on one of the circles. Okay, have that ready to go. So now we have um, adhesive on our flap. <laughs> we're going to cross across and we're going to meet our pieces and give it a smush. Give it a good smush. So they meet like that. And give it a smush. Okay. And again, over and give it a smush. Then what you're gonna do is flip it over and smush. Now you're gonna take your circle that's got all your adhesive and you're going to go ahead and fit it down over all of that mess. Okay, you're going to flip it over and you're going to do exactly the same thing on the bottom here. This is just decorative. It has no purpose other than just to hide the mechanics of stuff. More finished looking. Okay, so here is our here is our pot and our lid. This would be a cute sugar container. We still have to decorate the finial, but we're at least the teapot. We're doing good too, because we only like we we got started a half an hour late after I did all that talking. We've only waited for a couple of things for Tony, so we're good. All right, so now we need to make our spout. And this one's a little ch more challenging, but not, not overly hard, you guys. Again, it's still, still pretty easy. So you're gonna need your scoring board. 
and on the on your scoring board where did it go okay on on the three inch side of your spout you're going to score at five eighths one two three four five eighths okay and you're going to fold this over okay five eighths fold it over Now, you're going to put the folded edge back into the scoreboard. So the fold is right here, and it's going to go right across the top. Okay? And you're going to um, give a little tick mark, a tick mark, or a notch, at a half an inch. So just, just dig your hole in there. At one at one and a half, at two, at two and a half, at three and a quarter, so it jumps, two and a half, three and a quarter. Okay, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter. And again, all of these are over, um, over on my blog at scrapandstampcreations.blogspot.com. You can find those, um, those measurements so that you guys don't have to like scramble for anything specific. Okay. So again, this is the three by five and three quarters, you score at five eighths, fold it over, put the five, folded edge over, and then tick at each of those measurements I just gave you. Half an inch, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, and then four and three quarters, okay? Now you're gonna flip it all the way over and you're gonna put a tick mark at two and seven eighths on the opposite side. Two and seven eighths, so two and seven eighths, the one with the, the sides are there, okay? It's fun, we've been having fun. All right, so now we're also gonna need our ruler and our squishy piece again. Again, this is the back side of the Versamark or the Versamat. I'm going to grab my ruler with the, the thing. Now, you're going to take and take from the very back, you're going to start at your mark and run up towards that, the two and seven eighths mark. Okay, so on each of these, so we're kind of like doing a spot. Oh, actually, we should have started. It's the very there's a wide piece. So you draw directly to that and then you're moving ever so slightly off of that center mark, off the two and seven eighths. And you're just gonna kind of draw lines up there. They don't have to be, actually if they're off the mark just a touch, it works better, okay? So you're kind of making like a circus tent kind of top and I can't, Okay, and you're going to do that for both sides. And you guys will see its shape here in a minute. Okay, so now we have all these pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut straight up to the bottom
straight up to the bottom and then over straight up the line. So we're cutting off these triangle pieces. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you get it cut. Any questions? Tony wants to put a hexagon mini in there. All right, so that's what we do with that. Each of these corners come up to that point, kind of a little off on each side, okay? Okay, now this gets to be a little trickier. Hey. Hi, princess. You know what? You are a dog. Bite the cat. Really? Oh, now what you're also going to do is you're going to cut up to each and every one of these little points. Let up to them. Okay, so we cut away these things. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and burnish all of these. So you're just going to fold all of these on the score lines. It gets to be a little tricky just because it's it gets really narrow at one end, but we're going to cut that off and make it a spout here. So it's not real important. I mean, it is, but it's not. I think I have the wimpiest dog ever. Okay. So here comes your spout here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, adhesive and put it on the piece. And it doesn't have to get all the way to the top because we're going to cut some of that off anyway. Okay? Go ahead and roll some of that up on itself. Okay? And we're going to take and have these two pieces meet at the fold line. Okay? Now we have a fishtail here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's kind of a weird fishtail part there. We're going to cut that off straight across, just like that. So now the fishtail is gone. It's a teapot. If 
but you could leave it as a sugar bowl. You can put another handle on the side. You have a sugar bowl. All right, so we're going to put adhesive on these three sides too. Not my design. I found it on YouTube. I thought it was really cute. It went with the cards I was making. <laughs> Thank you, though. It has turned out really cute. I really am liking it, but um, it was Linda Parker's um, original. At least that's where I saw it. Over on YouTube. I just thought, I'm making it close to my heart crap. All right, so we're going to go ahead and these bottom two, we're going to go ahead and cross over, give them a stick. So next one. Again, we're just going to kind of give it a stick. And this final one. So we're just creating this spout. Okay. So here's our top. And then go ahead and put a piece across the top here for this part to come down. Now this is where mine from hers differs. She um, does not put her handle into the piece that um, comes in. I couldn't make mine stay any other way. It just didn't look nice, so I was like, yeah. Um, so that wasn't something I would do. Um, so what I have done is I have made this crunch into a V shape. So I've given it a little squish where it gets a bump, like it gets a broken nose. And that I've given it a little bit of a squish. Then I'm taking my three in one glue from Beacon. I'm going to put my lid on. And that allows me to have my spout actually adhere at a corner. Okay, so what you need to do as well, I remember, and then if you give it a little snip, you will have your spout. Mine's a big mess inside. All right. And I put glue on the inside of this guy, kind of around the edges. And then I make sure my, my lid fits and give it a squish really need something that is going to stick well. I had never done a star mini.
All right. So there is our teapot. Little teapot, short and stout. All right. So what we need are flowers for the top. And um, it calls for a six petal flower. I only have five petal punches. However, the stamp of the month for this month is got a Cricut cut on it. So I thought it would be fun to use those Cricut cuts. Since Mm, those are not the right ones, are they? No. Those are not the right ones. Where are the Cricut Cuts for this week? Did I stick them in? No. Alright, here they are. So these are the Cricut Cuts from Paper Garden. Oh, and there are only five flowers, too. Oh, well, well we're just going to use five flowers. So you need you need three of kind of the big ones and two of the small ones. And What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sponge the edges in eggplants. Now the cups go together the same way this did. We'll run through those really quickly. So anyway, this is eggplant. So I'm just doing the edges of the eggplant of the flowers in eggplant. And I'm going to do both sides. This really calls for six petal flower, but I only have five. I'd have to find a different one. And these are already cut, which makes it nice to play with. Okay, so two of the big ones you want to do both sides. And the little ones you want to do two sides as well. Tony gave up. She's posting on Facebook. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take our little tweezers. Now, the one that we only inked on one edge, we're just going to curl those edges downwards. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add some really good glue to the center and along the petal pieces. This is going to hide our twine and our piece up at the top. So we're kind of trying to get over the, um, the holes. It's not going to matter much considering that our, 
Yay! Hi, Donna. Yep, Darcy's here too. I saw that. Um, so just give it a hold a minute. All right, so then the other pieces, we're going to do our one up, one down pedal kind of twist. Okay, we're going to do that to all of our flowers. So one up, one down pedal twist. The lady who originally did these, which is really, it's really cute. She's got a little, like, tea caddy thing, like, you know, a, a box that you could put, like, six tea bags in. I think it needs a tray. Yeah, it's one of those really cute little gifty kind of things that you would make for somebody who is just a huge tea lover and would appreciate it, would have a place to, to set it out and, and do. All right, so again, we're just doing the one up, one down, kind of on our petal, one up, one down, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and glue our flowers together. So we're going to stagger them off a little, give them a hold. Huh? We're having fun. So excited. Turned out really cute. Okay, so now we're going to put this part on the middle here and stick those together for a minute. And then I have some big old pearls that have been in my stash forever. I'm going to stick one of those in the middle. Oh, wait. It took, it took my piece. Give me back. All right. <laughs> uh, I've been making lots and lots of mini albums. Anybody can tell you. I've made mini album, mini album, mini album the last couple of classes. Let me do mini album, cards, mini album, cards. This is the first 3D project in a while. All right. All right. So now we're going to kind of crunch this all up some more. And then this guy. Goes there. Mess and all. For a finial. So here's our cute little teapot with its finial and all of our little pieces. All right, so we're going to whip out our cups. We got two little cups to go with it. They're easy. 
super easy actually because really there's no like stuffing things moving it around any of that so our teacup pieces you guys can find the measurements over on my blog which is right here coming up scrap and stamp creations.blogspot.com So there's the blog piece. So we're going to make two matching cups that are going to be cute. All right. So our piece, we're going to score. It all looks purple on that one, but there are white dots on it. It's really cute. I'm liking that a lot. All right. So. Oh, goodness. On the eight inch side, so this is a piece of eight by five and a half. On the eight inch side, we're going to score it one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, and seven and a half. <laughs> We're going to flip it around and score it one and an eight, and three and five eighths. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? We'll do that one more time. <laughs> On our eight inch side, we're going to score at one and a quarter. Two and a half, three and three quarters, five inches, six and a quarter, and seven and a half. Rotate around <laughs> five inches. This is the five and a half inch side, one and an eighth. And three and five eighths. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. These are our cups. All right. Now, like we did on the cot on the pot, we're gonna go ahead and burnish all of the five inch the sides of our cup. So we're gonna go ahead and burnish all of these. She was the one who gave me the nickname Speedy Gonzalez. All right. She should get one done for every two that I get done, right? So again, what we've got is we're going to line up the one and a quarter inch mark here in the envelope punch board. And we're going to center, actually, you know what we're going to do from the other side. So you're going to fold in your piece. And you're going to kind of center it up and punch. And punch. And punch. And punch and punch and then punch the very up oh, you punch this one okay so you end up with a piece that looks like this 
okay? Do that again. We're going to fold over and punch. Fold over and punch. Fold over and punch. All right. Oh, I forgot the one on this side. Okay, got to have the little outie piece. All right, so that's all. All right. You ready, guys? We're going to cut off the bottom corner of the skinny piece and angle that in and then we're going to cut off the skinny little top piece okay and then we're going to go ahead and angle in these top pieces just a touch Again, we're cutting off the little piece, little corner, and angling in the edges, okay? Now we need our handles, which again gives us the smaller pieces or smaller holes. Ah, just threw the sticky note in the car in the tea. So we need the two inch hole. one right here and we need a one and a quarter which is this one right here so we need those so we need one that's cut with two of these and then one that or two of the um, actually we need two of these and four of just the solid one so we're gonna go ahead and Use some washi tape. And run that through. So there is one. There is our second handle. And 
And now we need four circles. Because we can't have unfinished. Yeah. Can't have unfinished cups. So there's one. There's two. There's three. Let's see, can we squeeze one more out of this paper? Yes, barely. Four. Yay. All right. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and use our sticky strip and we're going to go across the very top of the non punched out side. And then we're going to go right below the um, the other score line here. We're going to flip it over and put score tape, good adhesive on that side. And again on this side. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is fold this over and we want to kind of bring all of these around. We need to take our circles with the holes in them and fold them in half. Do I want, you know what, I'm going to use the polka dots on the outside. So kind of fold them in half as best as you can. Oh, I forgot another piece of tape. We're going to put a piece of tape right here along the edge as well. Then we're going to go ahead and take this little piece over here off. And we're going to stick our cute little handle in here. Stick it in there. I'm going to pull this off and pull this piece off. We're going to fold this down, leaving this top part open a little, okay? Then we're going to take the adhesive off of our edge and we're going to roll this towards, butt it up, and seal. Then we're going to push this back on itself. I am going to leave these purple and just leave them, leave them with the spotted handles because I think that's cool. All right. Good night, Darcy. And then what we're going to do is you're going to cut up each and every one of these on the bottom. And we're going to fold them back. We're going to we're going to put adhesive on three of them that are right next to each other. 
There's one. There's two. And there's three. And we're going to, like we did with the teapot, you go across. And we're going to meet up and give it a squish. going to take this one over, meet up, give it a squish, meet up, it over, give it a squish. And then with your Humongo ATG gun that weighs 12 tons and is huge, You go ahead and give it a bottom. Oh, good. And we find another one of our holes. This humongo tool. I know, I know. It's just so big. Why can't they make it like smaller? Just smaller. All right, so here is our little teacup. All right, one more time, quickly, this time. I love it, it's so cute. Here's our little handle. Oh, we still have to cut, cut out its little saucer though. We'll get that in just a second. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tuck it in so it doesn't, so it meets up. Give it a good squish. And then our handle bends back a little. Yay! 
The teapot itself is just like the teacup. All right. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right, so we have two teacups and a teapot. Cute. Now we need its saucers. The teacups need their saucers. And I have my largest circle here. So there's one saucer. And then I have two doilies. Now you can cut doilies off of your machine. If you're anything like most of us, you probably have some hiding in your craft room. So then we're just putting a doily Now we have two cups with saucers. 
We can offer some donuts. So it is 8.30, you guys. I have to run up to the hospital and visit my friend whose baby is out of the, uh, the step-down NICU and take her dinner and everything. I know we didn't get to the cards tonight. I hope you guys can forgive me. But we will definitely do, I, I will do a tutorial on the cards. They're really simple and easy. The biggest part of those are coloring. And uh, I just, I fell in love with the little teapot set. I thought it was really, really, really cute. And um, I, I absolutely love it. Um, but I want to get up to see Jennifer and Nathaniel too tonight. Anyhow. Um, so you guys can find the measurements to make these um, over on my blog, scrapandstampcreations.blogspot.com. A very big thank you to Linda Parker over on YouTube, who originally did all of these cute things and worked out all the measurements and stuff. Like I said, the handles are probably the only thing that's different, and the spout when I squished it in order to make it fit on our pot. Um, and... Um, I had a fabulous time. Next week, we're going to be making the cards at the beginning of this one. Hopefully, you guys um, learned something tonight and had a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me. Good night.